So relationship with sex education needs to be age appropriate, starting from the first year of primary school by talking about love and relationships, about different kinds of families. The fact that yo some young people will be in single parent families, some will live in extended families, some will live with same gender families. And that all are valid, that where love exists, that's what counts. And of course, this early education should discuss the correct names for body parts, the physical changes that young people undergo at puberty, and to tackle abuse, to raise about issues about inappropriate touching, about grooming, in order to teach children the difference between caring and exploitative behaviours. Now some people say, well, that is way, way too young. But the fact is that many children now begin puberty between the ages of 8 and 12. They need to know this information before those changes take place. So they aren't panicked by the growth of pubic hair or young girls aren't panicked by menstruation. It's just common decency to give young people the facts. And it's not encouraging sex, it's not promoting sex, it's just simply designed to help enable people to realise the changes in their bodies and the different kinds of love that exist. I think that if we keep young people ignorant about these changes, then we are threatening their happiness and their welfare. Um, moreover, children of all genders and gender identities should share relationship and sex education lessons and not be segregated by sex. To enable them to learn about and understand each other's bodies right from the outset, including boys learning about menstruation and both boys and girls learning about erotic dreams. Um, this is very, very, very important because lots of young people have, as I'm told by them themselves, they have deep anxieties about these things because no one told them. Um, it's very important for young people who have gender identity struggles to have information about the feelings and experiences they're going through to enable them to understand and feel comfortable in themselves and where it comes to it to make informed choices. The fourth point, again, which young people are saying is that we get all this information in school about how bad and dangerous sex is. You know, sexually transmitted diseases, child sex abuse. No one tells us about the pleasures and joys of sex and the fact that sex can be actually very good for you. So I think certainly from the age of 16 onwards, schools ought to be saying to young people, yes, it's okay to be asexual or celibate. It's okay if you don't enjoy sex, if you don't want sex. Um, there are some risks and dangers like HIV, but overall sex, responsible sex in the right way is good for us. Whether it's solo or with a partner, it's natural, wholesome, and with safe sex, healthy. And we know from research that quality sex can have a very beneficial effect on our mental and physical well-being. Um, you know, people who have a happy, fulfilled sexual life do tend to be happier, more fulfilled individuals across the board. And sex is often a way in which bonding and relationships can be cemented and strengthened. Now, I want to emphasize that, of course, Young people have a right to know that sex is not essential for health and happiness. Some people are asexual. They get by without sex and that's absolutely fine. However, they also need to know that most people find that regular fulfilling sex lifts their spirits and enhances their lives and relationships. The fifth point which young people have brought home to me is the importance of overcoming sex shame in order to chat, tackle sexual abuse. Sexual guilt causes immense human misery, not just frustrated and unhappy sex lives, but actual psychological and physical ill health. Very significantly, it also helps sustain child sexual abuse. Adults who sexually exploit youngsters often get away with it 
because the victims feel embarrassed or guilty about sex and therefore they're reluctant to report it. And this is a, this is a thing that abusers prey on. They rely on young people feeling ashamed and embarrassed to make them silent. So we need to challenge that. It's not good enough to simply tell kids to phone Childline. Um, if they're unaware that they are being abused and they don't have the confidence or the words to speak out. They need to be given the sense that sexual guilt and shame is damaging and wrong. They shouldn't feel guilty about these things. They should have the confidence to come forward to report abusers. And I think that if relationship and sex education did more to encourage young people to have open positive attitudes towards sexual matters and to how to more accurately report and name body parts and to blow the whistle on abuse, I think the level of child sexual abuse would go down. Um, I know from talking to young people that they say that when they're knowledgeable about their bodies, when they feel at ease talking about sex, they feel more likely and confident to disclose abuse. The sixth point is how to have sexual fulfillment. Most young people acknowledge that sexual literacy, knowledge, understanding is important. But many of them also say that sex or good sex isn't obvious. It needs to be learned. And of course, you know, you get the gossip behind the bike sheds and maybe looking at porn magazines or porn online. But that is not a good relationship and sex education. And we know that in the absence of sufficient practical information from parents and teachers about how to achieve shared sexual pleasure, to get this information, many young people are turning to pornography with its often unrealistic and degrading images, particularly degrading to women. So to me, it's pretty obvious that to ensure happier, more fulfilled relationships in adulthood, relationship and sex education for pupils aged 16 plus should include advice on how to achieve mutually fulfilling, high quality sex, including things like the emotional and erotic value of foreplay including things like the multitude of erogenous zones and how to excite them, the methods by which you can achieve sexual pleasure for yourself and your partner. This is particularly important for boys who often know very little about the female sexual anatomy and how to give a female partner fulfillment. If we can acknowledge that, then we need to do something about it. And I'd say for the older pupils, age 16 plus, beyond the lawful age of consent, then they should know about these things. We want people to be happy and fulfilled in their sexual lives and to be able to give happiness and fulfillment to their partner. So it isn't about me, 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 but it's about a shared mutual experience. The seventh point that young people raise is they want a moral ethical framework. And the current moral ethical framework is very vague, often very puritanical, and I'd like to propose a tweak of it. Um, I think it is important that relationship and sex education acknowledges diverse sexual orientations, gender identities, relationships, and lifestyles, but also gives teenagers guidance on their rights and responsibilities including teaching about consent and abuse issues. It is so shocking that we as a society do acknowledge and are rightly outraged by child sexual abuse, but we do so little in our schools to actually tackle it. And that needs to change. So what I'm suggesting is that a positive ethical framework can be summed up in three very simple principles. Mutual consent, reciprocal respect, 
and shared fulfillment. The great advantage of these three principles is that they apply universally. Regardless of whether people are married or single, monogamous or multi-partnered, hetero, bisexual, homo, trans or intersex. These three principles apply to everyone in every situation. They're the core three principles that should guide positive, healthy, happy sex and relationships. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.